Welcome to the Team TaylorMade Tour Truck here at headquarters, Carlsbad, California. We are restocking and taking this opportunity to build you guys a dealer's choice giveaway. Mill Grind 3 is going to be the first choice that I make. As you come over to this section of the trailer, you can see we keep all of our wedges here. I am going to make one lucky winner a standard bounce 1060 mil grind three. This has been perfectly shaped to handle the majority of lies that you are gonna face. It has the raw face in there with those raised micro ribs. So when you play your off speed shots, you can zip them like dusting. Let's get onto that as the next point as we move around the truck and we move to the golf shaft drawers here. You can see that I keep on this side, hybrid shafts, wedge shafts are all over here with the man himself having his own section, Dustin Johnson, DJ. He plays the KBS Tour 120S in that beautiful black finish. So let's start there. Moving into the section where we tip grind, why do we tip grind? Because when you want this to take on the epoxy, you're gonna to need to make this slightly abrasive. So straight out the gate. Remove some of that finish so that it's nice and tip ground and that abrasion is gonna hold for you. Then you're gonna need a ferrule. We move over to this section and look on this trailer how great it is. Everything is laid out, everything is in a perfect position so that I can move around as if I was making an order of that great sandwich that you eat at lunchtime. It's all where we need it. Bang it in to the depth that required, then we're gonna cut the length. Dust in place slightly longer than standard. This is dealer's choice. I imagine most of us out there do not play slightly longer than standard. So I'm gonna go and cut this right at standard length. 35 cut, that's on a USGA ruler. We measure from the middle of the sole of the mill grind three to 35 cut. I've talked about this before on videos. Every grip is gonna have an eighth of an inch that just comes over. I know that standard runs at 35 cut. It'll take in that eighth of an inch, a little bit over, should match into the majority of sets that are out there. Now when you cut on the trailer, it's a circular saw. So we actually spin the golf shaft. You can see that there. I'm not just gonna straight push through. I'm gonna massage the golf shaft through and spin. See that motion? Spin, spin, spin. And you are left look with the perfect golf shaft. Pretty good. Take off the edge. Remove any burr. Why do we do that? Because when you come later to put the grip on, you don't wanna catch any of the rubber at the end there. Keep the place tidy, that keeps Mr. Wade Lyles happy. Let's move over to this side of the trailer. Fresh tape in the tape deck. Why am I gonna put the tape on before we carry on? Because I want to swing weight the golf club. What is swing weight? It's gonna be a fulcrum point, 14 inches from the butt section of the golf club, and it gives you the balance. At the moment, all this is in different parts, but I want the balance, the perfect balance of the head to the grip. So when you play it, you have the feel in the hands that you can hit those zippy golf shots. Let's put a tape on here, so out of the gate, before we swing weight. Now, tape, how long does this tape need to go? Well, we're gonna need a grip. That's when we're gonna turn to, take a look in here, a lot of the team tailor-made grips. Dealer's choice again, we've got Rory, Tiger, Dustin plays no cord. That's right, we passed him already. You've got to have one of the Messiah's grips on there. Tiger Woods uses BCT, also known old school as Tor Velvet full cord. You can see the cord is a little bit brushed in here. That's what the BCT stands for, brushed cord technology. So when you get it, it doesn't quite feel as abrasive as some of those old school cord grips might have done. Two sets of tape on here. One is double-sided sticky, one is build-up. I am gonna go with just the double-sided. Now you can see, I've noticed on here, which I'm not gonna be happy about because it's gonna annoy me, 
I'm going to remove, to make this even more custom, the shaft sticker. I don't want, when this is built and cut to length, a bit of the shaft sticker coming out the bottom. Apologies, KBS, but that's got to come off because it'll get me on the OCD. Bit of heat. Comes off a lot easier. There's a great tip for anyone out there who is into re-gripping and uh, knows the pain involved in removing tape under grips. If you add a bit of heat, then it removes that perfectly. I'll clean that up with some adhesive remover later. Okay, back to where we were. You want the tape on. Why do you want to do that? Because you want to get the weight right. The weight is everything. I can't speak long enough, high enough, about getting the perfect balance. The tech that's gone into this, all the cutout for the feel, the finish, the thin, thick technology, the mill grind sole, everything that's gone into this wedge and the way you have these wedges and you match them up through the set, there's so much gone into it that if you don't build it right with the right balance point, what's the point in having all that great tech in the mill grind three? So, tape's on, another cool tour move. We use straight tape. See, I'm wrapping that over. You don't want any ridges in your tape. Ridges, level of player that I'm, that's going to win this on the giveaway, that is going to feel uncomfortable. So you want to get rid of all ridges in the grip. Out it comes, carry that in your hand. We've got our epoxy sat here. I built some wedges earlier. It's still wet. That'll sit wet on a tour truck for probably a couple of hours. So you can keep banging out golf clubs because we're going to use these devices in front of me, curing cells. 357 degrees, two minutes 44. That will dry this and be ready to hit. Dry build, this is called a dry build. That's what I'm doing right now. Club goes on there. Loft and lie I know is gonna be close where I'm at. So swing weight is first a letter, then a number. Hope you guys are keeping up and taking note. This is coming out at C8 right now before it's built. Over here we have our weights. I'm gonna add a nine in there. See if we can really take this up a little bit. E3, add your grip, usually about 10 swing weights. D3. Now, each swing weight is only two grams. You can see I keep moving back here. I wanna get the maximum I can get out the head weight, ideally. If it's not quite heavy enough, you can add lead powder. This is gonna live a pretty good swing weight. It's gonna be D4. As a standard wedge build, that's pretty good. That's where I would like it to be, but again, for feel. It's distributing the weight. Very, very important when it comes to tour, when it comes to building clubs, that you get the right swing weights for these guys and what they need. Add the epoxy, just over here for our plate. Bang this down so it's all the way. Perfect. One more for good measure. And you can hear the acoustics change slightly when you hit the bottom and hammer home on those grips and on those weights. Tidy up any excess. No shaft graphics to line up, but again, I know there was a shaft sticker on there. I just want to get it perfect. And this is where we hit our two minutes, 45 seconds to let that dry. Steel brush ready because I will clean up any glue that pops over but now we can take a break and wait for that to beep. There's that bleep, stop the timer, reset the timer for the next person, open up the curing cell and scrape off any excess glue. Perfect. Okay, our wedge is well and truly on the way. As I'm walking past the loft and lie machine, I will check what the loft and lie is at this stage. Remember, I've got to grip this club Line up those raised micro ribs in your loft and lie machine. Check everything looks exactly square and how you want it. And this is playing out at a fraction flat. So I am gonna bend this a hair upright. I'll come back to that because I've gotta take the ferrule knowing that I wanna bend it a little bit upright, which I'll explain that process in a second. Let's put the grip on. Upside down, when you use a round grip, be aware of that. But upside down always looks cooler, I think. And that means logo down. 
line up, even though it's a round grip, line up those notches on the top. So the club face has gone in perfectly perpendicular to the side of the truck. Everything gone in there, perfect. Flip it. Golf Pride, this is now purely cosmetic. Little tap to make sure you get, remember I talked about that raised eighth of an inch, make sure it sits in the cap. Check the length, good, right exactly where we need it. Check the swing weight, bang on where we wanted it. Now, take the ferrule down. Habit for me, you don't have to do it on every club, but I do with a black finish like this just to protect the finish in case this moves down. Just put a bit of tape on, circle the ferrule, because this is sitting up a little bit, and I said I wanted to change loft and lie, so I will come back to that. Plenty of practice with that one. Pretty good, now it sits flush. So now you can remove that tape that you put on there. Like I say, for me, it's more a force of habit, but it will protect anything you put in. Back into the loft and lie. Nothing hindering me bending this now. Tighten the clamps. It's coming in a little bit flat and a little bit weak. So what does that mean? Lie angle of the golf club, how the club sits on the ground. Why is it important when it comes to wedges? Well, it's very important when it comes to your whole set of golf clubs, but definitely wedges because we sometimes like to play our hands a little bit lower. It's all about how the club interacts with the turf. That now sits on 64 perfect, and I want to take it a fraction stronger as well because it's just living a little bit over 60. Let's get that bent. I felt like it moved. You're always feeling it move when you bend this. Perfect, 60, 64 lie angle. That lie angle between leading edge and shaft. So as I take this out to illustrate that to you, if you wanna get the benefits exactly of the mill grind sole, you're looking to get the perfect lie angle of the golf club. Now when you strike a ball, you can use the perfect part of the mill grind sole to get that. Let's put, just to finish this off perfectly, a fraction of acetone onto the ferrule. Turn that, give it a nice look. Remember I spoke about that shaft label. Remove the adhesive there. And that is almost ready to go. Fingerprints, obviously, I would like to remove those. And then I'll only touch the grip after that. And you will notice, for those of you with a keen eye, that I haven't removed the sticker across the raw face. Reason being, I want you to be able to do that. Because as soon as you remove that sticker, the oxidization process will begin. And you will start to reveal that raw face. Do not speed up the raw process by leaving the wedges overnight in water or however you might have heard. If you speed up the process, you fill the grooves with rust. You don't want to do that. You just simply want the raw face to reveal itself. That way, you're going to increase your spin, reduce your launch. When you're out of the semi-rough, you're going to get that raw feel because there's going to be nothing between you and the golf ball.